What do spiritually abusive churches say to keep you there? And what words do pastors use to abuse their spiritual authority? In today's video, we're gonna talk about six of them. And if you've watched the previous video on this playlist about church hurt, then you've gotten a glimpse of my story and where I'm coming from. But to get into the content of today's video, you'll remember that I had been teaching in the public school system and working as a small groups and student and prayer pastor in both congregations. After five years of that, the Lord spoke to me and my wife and told me to quit my job as a teacher and to launch out as an author and begin trailblazing a new path in ministry. When I shared this with my pastor, he looked at me and said, God is not obligated to catch you if you jump. Now, the years before that, anytime I did a new ministry in that church or launched something under his name, it was like, God's got you, go forward. But now that I was breaking away and creating something outside of that, his words were defeating. Since I respected him so much and honored him as the man of God in my life, it's as if God were speaking to me through him anytime he ever spoke to me. So I took those words and internalized them in my spirit. And for a long time after launching out in that direction, I fumbled and stumbled and was actually afraid to become successful because I felt deep inside like my pastor had prophesied to me that God was not going to catch me. So what is your story and what have you been told that has crushed you, that maybe has set you back or completely blindsided you coming from your pastor or your small group leader or spiritual leader in your life? I'd love to know a little bit about your story as well. And if you feel open enough, go ahead and share it in the comments. Let us know other than the six things I shared today, what are some other things that spiritually abusive churches say? And I do thank you for watching. I'm Aaron J. Daigle, an international speaker traveling to minister in churches and Christian conferences. And I've also authored several books, which I've linked down in the description below. Depending on when you're watching this video, I may even have one available about church hurt. So be sure to check those out and help push the video by smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm. So what do spiritually abusive churches say? The first is that you are the problem. When the spiritual leader does some of the things we're going to talk about in the next video in this playlist or shows one of the nine signs we talked about in the last video in this playlist, you get to thinking that maybe something's wrong. Perhaps I should point it out and maybe have a conversation and we can work this out. So you go to them in hopes of making progress or finding restoration or clearing up the confusion. And when you do, it gets turned around back on you. You are the one with the heart problem. You are the one with the issue. You are being rebellious. You are the one who is unsubmitted. It is never the leader's fault. It is always your fault. Now, here's what's particularly dangerous about this particular type of thing that is said to you. The mere fact that you are experiencing spiritual abuse tells me something about you. It gives me insight into your character. And that is that you have a heart to please God. You're seeking to be right with God and with your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Otherwise, you wouldn't care. You would blow the church off, blow the pastor off, go somewhere else. You wouldn't even worry about it. But since you don't want to do things wrong and you're unsure of maybe if you're right or wrong in this whole matter, it shows that you have that godly character, which unfortunately makes you susceptible to spiritual abuse. Now, given that that is who you are, when your spiritual leaders point back to you and say, no, you're the problem. This is why I did not do this. It is your interpretation. You'll often internalize that, go back and sit around thinking that you're crazy. And even though you see the issues and you know that what you know is right, you start questioning yourself, doubting your own observations and feeling like something is wrong with you. Now, the second thing they say is that you need to be planted where God put you. You need to be planted here. This idea comes from the scripture that says that planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish. And that if you leave this church or leave from under their ministry, that you are somehow uprooting yourself and your family. And you can't just go like a flower from garden to garden because you need to establish roots. So God putting you there for a season to accomplish a certain work in your life and for you to have a certain ministry in their lives, but then further progress in his will and his purpose in your life that would then take you someplace else isn't really an option. That is seen as you up rooting yourself and leaving the will of God. Now, if you remember my testimony from the other video in this playlist, you'll recall that while I was pastoring in that local church, God was dealing with me about traveling and ministering in other churches. And I had done that for several years on and off. I would speak out sometimes on the weekend or Friday night, but throughout the week I was involved in pastoring that local church. But once all the issues began between us and our lead pastors, he told me that I was no longer allowed to travel and speak out in any other church. That if any pastor from anywhere locally around the 
the world, around the country, asked me to go and minister in their church. I had to tell them that I was not available, that I was focused on what was happening in our local church. His reason for this was that I needed to be planted, that we no longer had a heart for this house, for his church, and until we rekindled that, it would be pointless for us to go and travel to minister in any other church. Now, keep this in mind because in the next video on what spiritually abusive churches do, I'm going to return to this and further the story to give you a full rounded view of what ended up happening because of that. But for now, just know that telling you you have to be planted here and you can't be planted anywhere else is something spiritually abusive leaders will say to you. Now, the third thing they'll say is any sort of fear tactic, especially surrounding those who have already left. The concept behind this comes from the biblical story of David and Saul. God had anointed both of them to be king and it wasn't David's timing yet. Saul was abusing David who had a chance in a cave one time to kill him, but instead of hurting him, cut off a piece of Saul's robe to come out and show him in the daylight, look, I had you and I could have hurt you, but I'm not after you as you suppose. I would never touch the Lord's anointed. So some spiritual leaders carry this concept over into the New Testament that if you defy or go against or harm your pastor in the church's vision in any way, then you are touching the Lord's anointed. And before I explain how this theological concept ties into fear tactics, let's be clear about one thing. Life happens. People get sick people die, people lose jobs, people go through hard times. It is a normal fact of living in a fallen world. When dealing with spiritual abuse, however, you'll find sometimes the leader indicating that those types of life events that occur for the people who have left or who are currently still there, but the pastor has indicated are no longer part of the team because they're not loyal to the vision, they'll use those life events to say that that is punishment from God, that God is judging them for what they did to the leader or to the church or to the vision. Back in our church, a family had left, one of them became terminally ill, and of course, what was told to the rest of the team was that that had happened to them because of what they had done to the pastors. The cruelty of the extent to which some spiritual leaders will use this fear tactic is mind blowing. An additional family who left our church ended up losing a child. And of course, what was communicated to us was that they lost that child because of what they had done to the church and to the pastors. Now that example was the most extreme I heard. What was more common was anytime somebody was not accepting what the pastor was telling them they had to do, if anything happened, economically, a job loss, or even a demotion, it was spread around the church that they were experiencing that because they did not follow and obey the pastor. What this does is it makes you afraid to follow your intuition or to acknowledge what it is you're observing that is off key. It makes you afraid to leave because if people are getting sick and losing loved ones and losing jobs and can't pay their bills because they're unsubmitted to the church's plans and goals and to what the pastor's telling them they have to do with their lives, then nobody wants to experience that. And so we stay stuck and we allow that abuse to continue because those fear tactics keep us in our place. Now, before moving on to the next point, I wanna say if that has been said to you or about you, and if you're experiencing some type of struggle after having been abused spiritually and are wondering, is this God punishing me? Let me assure you that that is not how God operates. Even if you were wrong, just assume for argument's sake that you were. You are living in the time of grace and God doesn't take sides with who's right and who's wrong and bless one and then judge and murder the other person because they somehow did something wrong in an interpersonal relationship. What you're experiencing Experiencing is simply life, and I free you. I free you from the bondage of that fear tactic that was used against you. Now, the fourth thing spiritually abusive churches say is what you say to them. This is the information collector, someone who asks questions and is always wanting to know what's going on and wants you to share your personal business with them. And chances are they'll tell you particular things about their lives that they're okay sharing, but you don't really get the full picture and get to know them as much as they're trying to get to know you. But then in turn, after gathering this information and it then serves their interests, will then turn around and use that information against you, either by cornering you with a fear tactic like we talked about in the previous point or sharing that information with somebody else to create a rift between the two of you. Another way this is done is to find out vulnerable areas of things you need or things you're seeking in life. And then later on to come back and say, hey, I believe you'll get this particular thing if you do this, that God will bless you with that if you obey this. In other words, it is a tactical maneuvering of using your private sensitive information against you. Now, the fifth thing abusive spiritual leaders will tell you is that you can't possibly be more spiritual than your pastor. In other words, I know what's best for you more than what you know for yourself or your are not spiritually mature enough to understand, and even that God won't speak to you without speaking to your pastor first. There are so many references in the Bible of God speaking directly to people, of God talking to them about where they need to go, what they need to do, scriptures discussing how the Holy Spirit will lead us, that you don't need anyone else to teach you, that you shouldn't call any other human being your father. This idea that God works through your pastor and does not communicate directly with you is an Old Testament concept that God spoke to the priest and is therefore unbiblical in the church age 
even though it is preached as if it is a legitimate doctrine. The Bible in the New Testament teaches the priesthood of the believer. It says in another scripture that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. You have way too much Bible indicating that God does speak to you and he won't necessarily tell somebody else about you what he's telling you about you. Now, personally, I would be very cautious about this because we can make mistakes. The Bible says also that our heart is deceitfully wicked. And in my experience as a minister, I have seen many people believe they are definitely hearing from God and I can assure you they are definitely not. So in my case, I've been doing active ministry for 17 years. That is literally half of my entire breathing lifetime. And still, I have a pastor and he has permission to speak into my life and he does. And there are things he has told me that I have checked myself on and said, yes, he is correct and I have changed ways. There have been other things, however, that he has told me that I've gone back to prayer and looked at in the word in the context of our lives and said, no, nah, that's not going to work. I'm not doing that. Why? Because he, like me, is also prone to error. He's not abusive, so I trust his judgment and weigh his words heavily and take it to prayer. But where we get into trouble is where we are 100, zero, all or nothing. We do everything our pastor tells us, no matter or what and we never question it and we follow blindly which can lead to spiritual abuse or we absolutely have nobody who can tell us anything about ourselves we know best and nobody can ever hold us accountable there needs to be a balance where we have somebody speaking into our lives but we are still thinking for ourselves weighing their considerations alongside of the scriptures and what god is telling us in prayer but if your leader is telling you that you're not hearing from god and he is that you're not mature enough and you just don't understand and that god will only speak through him to you then you are hearing a twisted theology and maybe in some kind of abusive relationship. Now, the sixth thing abusive spiritual leaders will say is that whatever you want to do or you're hearing or are planning that goes against their agenda is you hearing from the enemy and you are stepping out of the will of God. In other words, their idea for your ministry, what you should and shouldn't be doing in your life is somehow God's will. And when you don't fulfill that plan or that purpose that they have for you, what's brought against you is the idea that you are now stepping out of the will of God. So if you are taking a job that is moving you across the country where there is an awesome church, but in turn will be leaving that spiritual leader without that role that you've been filling in their church filled, then your consideration of that job is the enemy talking to you, right? That's just an example. But what it boils down to is that their will somehow meshes with God's will for your life. And that when you want to do something outside of that particular will, the accusation is that you are somehow now following the devil's will. So thank you for watching about what spiritually abusive churches say. And now be sure to check out the next video on this playlist on what it is they do. And do subscribe before you leave while notifying the bell to stay updated with all the new uploads.